Welcome to Witch Talks, the series for spiritual seekers, witches, and enlightened souls. I'm Hannah the Suburban Witch, professional tarot reader, astrologer, and witch, and I hope you're ready to get up close and personal with your favorite witches. Hello, hello. So wonderful to have you here with me today for another Hannah, help me question. If you have a question for me, please send it through to info at suburbanwitchery.com. Today's question comes in from Diana and she says, Hannah, help me. How do you handle multiple reads energetically? Do you step away for a bit? I know that cleansing in between is a must, but do you limit yourself to a number per day? I'm curious since I would like to do multiple reads, but most times I'm lucky if I can do one or two. Now, this question was actually submitted, not via the usual format, which is email, but on one of my YouTube videos. If you haven't seen it, I have a video called Delivering Difficult Divination readings. This is for tarot, astrology, psychic and mediumship, any form of divination reading that you're giving. It's basically when you have bad information, the cards are not positive and how to deliver that in an empathic and ethical manner. And Diana asked this question as a comment and I said, I need to add this to the podcast for Hannah Help Me because I do think It's a common one I see all the time, and it's very beneficial to understand the answer if you are a reader yourself of any form. Now, that video specifically was talking about any form of divination. So this information I'm going to be giving you is for any form of divination. Tarot, oracle, astrology, pendulums, runes, tea leaf reading, like anything that you're doing. Which little side plug, I do have my course open at the moment, The Art of Psychic Divination, where I teach all those things and how to connect in with your innate psychic gifts. And it's open right now until November 16th for the very final live run of this course. So you do not want to miss it. But if you're already doing that and noticing that you're feeling energetically drained, that's what we're going to be dealing with today on today's episode. So buckle up buttercup as we get into it. So firstly, Diana has asked, how do you handle multiple reads energetically? From this, I'm I'm presuming one after the other, after the other, after the other. They then said, do you step away for a bit? So it will depend. And it's going to depend on a lot of things, as most of my answers are, which is why they make up full episodes. <laughs> When I responded on on YouTube, I basically said, I a comment reply cannot do this justice. But the TLDR, so the too long didn't read version, is grounding will help, but that's an oversimplification. So, for example, I often do something called a tarot and gin party. I've done quite a few of those. They're really fun. It's not something I usually advertise because my husband is away 50% of the year and we don't get much notice. So it's really tricky to organize things like a tarot and gin party, which usually happens at night, external from my home when I've got young kids to look after. So they happened more when we lived in Victoria and he had a ground posting, which just means he's not flying away all the time. But when I do tarot and gin parties, there is multiple people and I'm doing reading after reading after reading in person. Okay. Now that has a very different feeling to it as to when I do, for example, live readings. Now, once a month in the Suburban Witches Society, which is my private group membership, every member gets a reading. If they're there on the live call, I'll do that on the live call. We might have 10 of us, 10 people in a row. Later on, the people who aren't there still get a reading. I still pull them tarot cards and do a reading for them for the month ahead. And I'm just sitting down and going through the list of people in the group and pulling cards for them. So that's, you know, 20 readings in a row. 
Am I stepping away for a bit in between each of them? That's going to depend on A, my energy levels for the day, B, other requirements and things like that. The live ones, no, I'm not. I'm just boom, 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 one after the other. Because what I find, live readings give me energy. They don't drain it for a number of reasons that we're going to go into. But if you are finding you're giving live readings to people in either over Zoom live or on maybe an Instagram live where you're doing multiple readings or in person, especially reading after reading after reading and you're feeling drained, something's up there. In my opinion, that's not how it should be. So no, I don't step away for a bit for those. When I'm doing the written ones and I've got like 20, I do step away for a bit, but it's not because I'm drained energetically. It's usually because I have raging ADHD and I get bored of doing too many things in a row like that. So I have to do like, I'll do four, then I'll get up and hang out the washing and then I'll do a few more. Then I'll record this podcast episode. (laughs) Now, as someone with you know, a menstrual cycle and chronic health issues and migraine and all sorts of other things. Obviously, my energy output is going to be determined by those factors as well. So if you're feeling energetically drained, is it because of the tarot or the readings that you're giving, the divination readings, or could it also just be life and that doing any task for that amount of time or with that level of concentration would be draining for you? So for me, doing multiple reads, energetically speaking, is not difficult, not difficult at all. In fact, doing a lot of them puts me on a bit of a high sometimes. And I can feel that that energy rising up almost like my face gets hot and I have to consciously stop and ground and push it back down or I'll just float away. (laughs) And my husband says I'm unbearable after doing multiple readings. He's like, oh my gosh, our energies do not match. I'm going to bed. (laughs) Have fun with whatever you're going to (laughs) do. But then again, I've been doing this for a long time. So a lot of that comes to practice, it comes with practice, comes with building up a bit of a energetic immunity to, to that sort of energy, right? When I first began and when I first started doing readings for people in online Facebook groups for free, and I would do five to 10 readings per day, that was exhausting. That was a lot but I was building those muscles because back then remembering the meanings, tuning in with my psychic gifts, all of that took immense effort. I was strengthening those muscles. Now it's very, very easy. I do it literally every day. It's very easy for me. So I think some of the answer here in terms of handling multiple reads energetically comes down to practice, building up a tolerance and also making sure you're grounded. If you're not grounded, you're going to have a hard time. You might end up with a headache. You might end up feeling really drained and you might feel like it's a bit tricky to get those readings done. Like they're not, you just can't find the words sometimes. Now, the other part that's really interesting in your question is you've said, I know that cleansing in between is a must, Is it? Is it a must? I don't do that. If you've ever been on a live uh, group call with me, I never cleanse in between readings. Every now and then, if it feels like it needs it, I might knock on my deck. So you knock three times, like you're knocking on a door. But that's, that's quite rare for me to do. In saying that, I always recommend to people starting out, Cleanse more frequently than you think you need. And then when you forget or life gets in the way and you notice it's fine, you're like, oh, sweet. That means I can extend them out a bit. But when you get to a point where you go, hmm, actually, this does feel like it needs a cleanse. That's where you find your sweet spot and you can sort of dial it back from there. So my frequently in use decks, they, the main method of cleansing I use these days is I put it back in order. I put the tarot deck or the oracle deck back in order. With astrology, I don't need to cleanse anything. <laughs> That's, it's on my computer. Uh, with things like charms casting, I don't 
cleanse those either. Gosh, I don't think I've ever cleansed those. Am I a terrible witch? No, they read beautifully. Beautifully. That's the other thing. If they're not reading well, then I would be doing it. Right? But keep in mind, if I'm doing in-person readings with a lot of people, yeah, then I'm, I'm going to be cleansing after I've finished all of the readings. If I'm doing a party event, I do... 10, 20 readings for people, afterwards go home and cleanse my decks because people have been touching them or, you know, it's just been around people's auras. Whereas when I'm doing them online, I'm, I'm in my sacred safe space, right? It's, there's not as much of an effect in my experience. So you asked if I limit myself to a number per day in the beginning. Yes. Now, no, the only limit really is my time and availability around parenting and health and work hours. But Diana, you said you're lucky if you can do one or two. So what I would recommend, what my personal advice for you would be, don't worry about cleansing so much. If you really feel it needs it, put your cards back in order at the end of the day. If the tarot is zapping your energy that much, make yourself a little pact to read least once a day do one reading per day that will keep it because if you're doing sort of one or two every now and then it's almost like you you know like you're not going to the gym enough right you're never going to get better if you're only going once a week or once every couple of weeks you know it's going to take you longer to get to where you want to be we need to start building up that tolerance so if you can manage i don't know if people are paying you for readings or if you're doing them for free or for friends or whoever it is but set yourself a goal of doing one per day for somebody else. Try only cleansing once a week. Just give it a go. See what happens. If it feels weird and not right, then do it more. If it feels okay and you're like, oh, this is exciting. You, you might be expending a lot of energy in the cleansing aspect, right? That can take a lot of energy to do properly, depending on how you do it. I would also recommend, so do... Do one week of giving a reading every day and ground yourself before you do that reading. I have an, a free audio download for a 12 minute grounding meditation on my website. Free download. Anyone can access it. It's in my shop, but it's zero dollars. So it's free. Try that meditation. As I said, 12 minutes. It's not very long. So do that before you do the reading. Keep a note of how that feels for you, how it feels doing the reading. The next week, so you've done seven with it beforehand, the following week, do the same amount of reading, so one per day, but do the grounding afterwards. It's just a little shift and it's going to give you an example of, of where you actually need to do it. Do you need it afterwards? Do you need it before? Do you need it to almost pull that energy up from the earth and use that instead of your own energy before a reading or are you needing to sort of expel some of that energy afterwards is that what's getting you tired down so it's and you, and you know connecting in with that earth energy afterwards can be really helpful so just experiment experiment you're allowed to experiment we're all allowed to experiment and then after two weeks if you're still feeling tired after one maybe hit me up and we can we can chat a little bit deeper about it there might be something else going on but if you find after two weeks of doing it every day that you can easily go to two people or it might be a stretch but you can do it and then you go to three and then you go up from there soon you'll be able to do as many people as possible and it won't bother you at the same time always listen to your body if you need to step away you're allowed to step away that's totally fine. But in order to grow as a tarot reader or any form of divinatory reader, you need to expand the limits of your abilities. You need to force yourself beyond that comfort zone carefully so that you can offer your gift to the world more freely in a way that doesn't harm you and doesn't zap your energy. As I said earlier, my course, The Art of Psychic Divination, deals with all of this, right? We have seven modules and and one of the very first one is on the foundations of energy work like the very foundational skills that you need including grounding cleansing meditation shielding 
all of those things for any form of psychic and energy work. Like I will not teach anyone any form of divination. Like we're not even doing pendulums until you've got those foundations down pat. And I know the foundations are boring. People want to skip it. They want to get to the good stuff. They just want to start slinging cards and chatting with their spirit guides. But nope, we got to get those foundations of psychic, energy, divination, all of those foundational skills, we need them first. So that module one is just about what what is all of those things? What is grounding? What is cleansing? What is meditation? Why do we do all this? What's its purpose? How do we do it? When do we do it? What are the ways we can do it? There's All of that is covered just in module one before getting into you know, any form of divination. So that is open to new students until November 16th. I would love to see you in there. We do live psychic development circles. There'll be one in November, one in December, and two in January. And they are so much fun. You get to explore and expand your skills with me live on the call. So if you have issues like it's zapping your energy, that's where we talk about it. And if it's a real issue, I pull out my own cards and I'll help you right there and then. So really, really beneficial. There's lots of value in there. And you'll come out the other end feeling like you absolutely have this down pat. You know exactly what to do and how to figure out what the problems are to fix them as well. So don't let your divination tools zap your energy. They work for you. We don't work for them. All right. So just a short and sweet little episode for you today. Next week, we're going to be talking about how to do a cord cutting. So that one will be really, really beneficial. And I'm excited to share it with you. If you know someone who would benefit from this episode, please share it with them. If you enjoyed it, share it on your socials and tag me. I love seeing those sorts of things and hearing from you guys. It just gives gives me such a thrill, the thrilliest of thrills. I hope you're having a wonderful day wherever you are in the world today and I will chat with you next time.